director of the Courtney Medical Group, located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray, Pennsylvania. For more information or to make an appointment, call 724-942-3002. That's 724-942-3002. For Dennis J. Courtney, MD. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to AM Impact on Your Health. AM Impact on Your Health for every day, our goal, to have you learn at least one thing to help you live better and longer. AM Impact on Your Health, why it's heard every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney, and I'm with you each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9. AM Impact on Your Health for each day you'll find current medical news, knowledgeable guests, fascinating health topics, and of course, we always encourage you to call in to join in. Today, well, uh, yeah, we're moving into the spring element to get, get, get some hot weather. Hey, starting tomorrow, 78 degrees. Um, but did you accumulate some poundage over the winter? I think uh, it's a common thing said by many about this time of the year as we get into that summer bathing suit weather season. Anyway, would you like to shed some of those pounds? We're going to meet with a good friend of ours. You've met him before a couple times at least. Uh, you can call him Mr. Arkansas. You can call him Mr. Todd Scarborough. He's going to be our guest today in how to shed those pounds that you picked up over the winter in an easy way. Five simple exercises. Well, we know him as a good friend. Let's see if we can uh, gain his confidence once again to give us a look inside of how we can get down to where we want to be for this summer, up and coming summer season. Todd Scarborough, our guest today. Of course, if in our discussions with Mr. Scarborough you'd like to call in to make a question or a comment, the uh, phone number, as always, will be 412 825 6262. 412 825 6262. And we will give that number additionally throughout the hour. Now, up and coming uh, on Friday, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you do your own diagnosing on Friday because I find out uh, you're going to be better at it than your doctor is. Uh, this is with respect to thyroid disease. We have had uh, a lot of information we've been part of you over the many weeks to months, and finally we'll come at you with a, uh, with a topic that's head on, right on, dead on with respect to what you really want to know. I mean, do you have a healthy thyroid or don't you? Uh, likelihood is, by the way, it's not so healthy. But yet, you keep going to the doctor and he keeps telling you, well, no, your thyroid's fine because your blood tests are okay. We're going to get into how really this diagnosis needs to be made and how you probably can do a better job of it on your own, believe it or not, than with the help of your doctor who really, once you see his normal lab work, pretty much rules out the disease thyroid way too prematurely. Anyway, on Friday, we're going to talk about how to do that, and I believe in a better way than is getting done ordinarily around these parts. Uh, so that's on um, Friday. Look, I want to bring to your attention. We would have loved to have brought him to us today. We already had a scheduled guest. Uh, the fact that the Freedom of Choice and Cancer Therapy Group is meeting, uh, they're actually meeting tomorrow night because uh, it is the third Thursday, finally, they uh, they have a scheduled guest on the usual time. We're used to, to knowing that they bring you their monthly guest. Uh, it's going to be 7 o'clock, days in, Route 8, just ask the butler. That, that all meets uh, the, uh, the information as we've always known it. 7 o'clock, I guess that meets the right time. The speaker's name is Kevin Brown president of what's something called the Liberation Wellness uh, Center and a diet that he proposes as the Liberation Diet. Well, if getting fit is in the air, we're going to be talking about it today with Todd Scarborough. You're going to be talking about it up there on Thursday night at the Freedom of Choice and Cancer Therapy Group with your guest, Kevin Brown, who has uh, a wellness and fitness trainer himself. Uh, he's written a book called The Liberation Diet Book. You'll be hearing all about it up there. Hope you enjoy the meeting up at the Freedom of, Can Freedom of Choice and Cancer Therapy Group. A little blurb came to me 
uh, suggesting that we um, put out a little bit of information about the up and coming for next month's guest. And uh, I'll just read right here what I had said to me. And uh, I think it's intriguing enough. You probably, I hope we get this gentleman for a guest. Don't miss next month's meeting, this the little director says. On Thursday, June 17th, go, go ahead and circle it. Dr. Bernardo Lapayo will be here. A truly amazing man. He will turn 109 years of youth and wellness on August 17th, one month or two months later. Look, I'm real fascinated with the, with the fact that the gentleman could going to come to town. Hopefully we'll, we'll get him here on our show. We probably need him to just speak, and we need to take the notes and let him tell us how you reach 109 and still do public speaking events. So that's the guest for uh, next month on June 17th. Circle it, and uh, we'll see if we can get him here on the radio show before he actually comes and uh, meets you all up there at the Freedom of Choice and Cancer Therapy Group. So they're in full swing, and the way things work, I think it would appear as though next month's guest would be the last guest of the year because they normally take a little bit of break for the summer. At least I'm going on past performance. Uh, no mention of it here, but uh, I'll keep you informed, folks, as I usually do. Also, too, I um, want to keep uh, in mind the uh, vitamin D connection. Now, that, that connection keeps being, make, make, being made by others. Uh, in the conventional medical community, they have literally stumbled across this. I do want to underline the word stumbled. No matter how they got here, they are here. They understand the importance of vitamin D. They just don't understand how vigorous an attempt it will take to get you to ideal uh, vitamin D levels. They won't necessarily use the ideal level. The normal level is 32 nanograms per milliliter, and uh, uh, there are – it's a it's a pretty low bar to set when you figure that the optimal level is above around 80 nanograms per milliliter, and it'll take quite an effort to get you there. Uh, this is where I think you need to be and where we'll help you arrive. Uh, so uh, especially, too, after having mentioned to you last week uh, of the new blood pressure control component associated with vitamin D and that it really is uh, a natural albeit a uh, completely uh, normal way to control blood pressure through ACE inhibition, ACE, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibition, which is a whole category of drugs, uh, all with that suffix pril on the end of it, captopril, lisinopril, and, and the list goes on and on and on and on. Uh, and uh, now we find out, uh, and believe me, from a newsletter that... Uh, uh, Many years old, 2004, Jonathan Wright's newsletter uh, somehow crossed my desk last week, and I brought it to you. But those with blood pressure issues probably want to be mindful of attaining optimal levels of vitamin D. You're going to have to ask for the right vitamin D level with your doctor. That's going to be the 25-OH-D3, not the active form of the vitamin because it only has a half-life of a few minutes and it would catch most um, most of your doctors off guard been thinking, that well, I would get the most active form of the vitamin. That's the one I want, and it really is it. It's 25-OH-D3. In fact, an error was even made uh, in Jonathan Wright's newsletter because it was asking that you should get the 125-dihydroxy, the active form of the vitamin, when actually that would be the inappropriate form to get. So anyway, a little bit of confusion out there. We'll always clear it up for you here. Of course, we're always interested in what you want to say about it, too. And don't forget that number is 412-825-6262. Should mention that um, there was a, a blurb that just came out. This was on the Mercola website. He's always good at this. Um, and when it comes to vaccines, it always catches my eye. As it turns out, we got another, we got another hiccup. we got another bump in the road. Uh, when it comes to vaccines, or I guess the conventional medical community should look at it in that way. I don't necessarily think I do. Uh, but this is a uh, headline, May 15th, seasonal flu vaccines have been suspended in the country of Australia. 
in all children under the age of five years old. Uh, this due directly to the fact that uh, the, there are as many as 25 children in Western Australia who were admitted to the hospital suffering from convulsions after that injection. Now, team that up with some other information coming off that big island of Australia, another 40 or so with convulsions uh, reportedly after this injection in other parts of the uh, uh, Metro Hospi uh, Metropolitan Hospital uh, Network. And then finally, 250 more adverse reactions in the form of fever, vomiting, and the like. And we got a picture emerging in Australia that they just shut it down. They said, uh-uh, no way. And you'll be hearing more about it. We'll report to you, of course, um, these vaccines are the very similar ones and about the same ones that we bring to our children under the age of five. And I think uh, that's a pretty scary thing to hear that there's now uh, such a high incidence of, of convulsions. Actually, even one death uh, that's mentioned in, uh, in the country of Australia where they actually just banned and said no more, no mas uh, of these vaccines in children under the age of five. Okay. That just about rounds out some preliminary information. Hey, why don't we do this? Why don't we take a short break? Did you gain some weight over the winter? Uh, a lot of people did. Do you want to shed it as we move into the spring and summer months? Do you want to do it sensibly? How about five easy exercises according to somebody you know very well? His name is Todd Scarborough. He's also called Mr. Arkansas, of the past at least. We'll be back in a moment with him, and we'll take up this discussion and enlighten you on how to get slim and healthy for the summer months. Be right back. This is Dennis J. Court Hampton. If you become confused about how best to manage your health, it's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow it seems to be reasonable enough, but no matter how dutifully you follow the instructions, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. Hey, Todd, we offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, okay, cutting edge technology corrections, uh, and host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Want to help your family eat healthier? For a good cut, so food with wondrous way. How about some real nutritional power? If your family has the typical American palate for fries, pizza, and burgers, giving your family the blessing of good nutrition is a struggle. Fruit of the Spirit is the answer for your family's nutritional needs. Fruit of the Spirit is an all-natural, whole fruit puree made from fresh fruits native to the Holy Land with alkalizing minerals. Fruit of the Spirit was five years in the formulation, the work of a team of top nutritional experts with independent science to confirm its antioxidant power. One ounce a day provides the equivalent of five servings of fruits and minerals. Fruit of the Spirit is convenient, affordable, and delicious. Even your picky family will sing the praises of Fruit of the Spirit. Give your loved ones a blessing of good nutrition. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Fruit the Spirit, a blessing for your good health. That's 1-800-442-3793. Call them now. 1-800-442-3793. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back once again to AIM Impact on Your Health. Here on this uh, gloomy Wednesday morning version of the show, gloomy may be outside, but never gloomy in here, uh, especially when we meet with old friends. Hey, um, here's spring has sprung, but uh, how about your waistline? Did it spring along with it? And do you'd like to do something about it, but you're not quite sure what? And, you know, you need a little bit of help. And about this time of the year, there's so many folks trying to help you. Our guest today really has the expertise to do so. He says five simple exercises will do it. He says they'll 
pump you up and slim you down for spring, and they won't cost you a fortune either. Of course, our friend is uh, Mr. Todd Scarborough. We like to call him Mr. Arkansas multiple times, by the way. He won that title initially back in 1984 at the age of 19. Again, he wins it in 2002 at the age of 38. He also won the Mr. Teenage Arkansas title in 1982. Mr. Arkansas, Matt, this fella is a specimen, folks. Um, he's the, uh, he's uh, in the fitness and nutrition, a spokesman for Nordic Naturals. Todd educates consumers about fish oil's role in sports nutrition and performance enhancement. He's with us now somewhere on the highway. He pulled off everything safe. Good morning, Todd, and welcome back, old friend. Good morning, Dr. Corky. It's great to be with you here. Yeah, sitting on the highway, uh, talking on the radio. I love it. It's a beautiful morning here. Well, uh, by the way, where is here? Where are you today? Uh, headed to Tulsa, actually, in northwest Arkansas, a beautiful part of Arkansas, mountainous region, uh, close to the University of, of Arkansas, here in Fayetteville. Well, Todd, uh, you be careful once you crank that engine back up and get on the road, and uh, thank goodness you pulled off a bit to spend some time with us. Uh, I like always to use the word old friend, and really, I think this is your third or fourth time on the show, and um, I always enjoy having you on there. The, the title, Mr. Arkansas, uh, it's, it's always around the corner with you. By the way, the last time we talked, you were considering going back and doing it again, meaning going after this Arkansas title. Did you ever do that? weeks until the show on my diet everything is holding well the biggest thing is you get as you get older as an athlete is you, you know, as long as you can continue to train and stay consistent the minute you have an injury you're done so so far i'm training smart uh you have to train different as you age obviously you gotta i tell people the only difference between a young man and an old man as far as an athlete is concerned is it takes us a little longer to warm up and a whole lot longer to recover so uh <laughs> That's the only difference with me now as an athlete. As far as on the negative side, I definitely feel like I'm a lot better as an athlete today just simply because I know my body. I've been doing this for so long. And, and with everything, over decades, you really get the wisdom down and the knowledge that you need and the faith that becomes almost instinctual, and you can build from there. So it's a beautiful time in my life right now. I, I really am feeling good. and. And I just hope the young kids keep calling me old man backstage. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, when when are the festivities? When is the competition going to be held? It's in August. Uh, August the 14th is the show. And uh, I'll be sitting probably at about 3% body fat by then. I'm sitting right now at around 9, uh, at around 230 pounds. And I'll drop down to about 3%. And, uh, boy, you're talking about some food cravings that happen then. Oh, yeah. Every time I turn on the television, uh, there's another fitness expert trying to pawn off another machine. They're pulling it out from under the bed. They're pulling it out from the closets. They're bringing it down from the ceiling. Uh, the, whatever the unit happens to be is all you need, they say, to get you into shape. And you say, you know what? You don't need any of that stuff. You just need you and just say five simple exercises. Why don't I need that machine? And why is it that on five simple exercises, you should be able to get wherever you want to get with your goals and objectives and your own ability to uh, lose fat? We won't use the term lose weight. We'll use the term lose fat. That's the way to do it. And, and if you're wanting that, if you need an extra towel dryer or a clothes dryer or a clothesline, <laughs> uh, those things substitute very well long term, those home gym pieces. Uh, what happens over time is people, one, get bored with the movement. Uh, two, these things are fairly shoddy built. So, you know, they have, they're built with price in mind more than quality lasting. So even if you use them, they're going to break down on you. But most of the time people get bored, they associate home with kind of relaxation anyway. 
And so what happens? It becomes this big albatross in the living room, and then you, you know, sell it on eBay for five bucks. And so ultimately what I try to get my clients to do is say, let's, let's do these very basic, simple moves. Uh, you don't really need to, to have all these elaborate machines at different angles on things. You just need to move the body. And when you look at the different types of exercises, what's available out there from aerobic to anaerobic activity, I try to get my people to do both. Uh, anaerobic is where you're stressing the muscle and really in, in building muscle size, like in bodybuilding type activities. If the aerobic side would be more the conditioning side. So you can really get both of these with these simple exercises, with just body weight exercises. It doesn't cost anything. You can do it anywhere in a hotel room. Uh, and then you can stay consistent that way. And that's really the most important thing. If you have a piece of equipment that you're training on at home and you're traveling, uh, you, you don't have that available. You know these basic exercises, body weight exercises that you can do. You can get a good workout, move the body, and get both aerobic and anaerobic to training at the same time. Now, you would be a proponent of what you refer to as the calisthenic form of exercise as opposed to the mechanized versions that involve the use of and the purchasing of these machines, no matter where they're being pulled down from and pulled out from underneath of. Uh, and you say, no, 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 we don't need to do that. You've got everything that you need right there with just you. Uh, and you say there's five in particular that probably are the five that will get you to where you want to go with respect to losing body fat. You want to talk about these five? Because uh, I think in our own minds, uh, watching as we have over the years, we've seen calisthenics perform. We've been involved with calisthenics. Uh, can you paint a visual picture in my mind as to what type of calisthenic these five are and uh, how I can adjust them to age and to uh, height and weight and other limitations that I might have? That's perfect, and and you know the the ones that we can think of that everybody probably is aware without any description is push ups and set ups. Sure. Push ups are something that's going to work the chest. Uh, those people who can't do a push up, and I have clients all the time say, you know, I'm not, I'm just not strong enough to do one. And I go, okay, drop to your knees. Uh, that's what you call your cheap push ups. You you drop to your knees, and that shortens the body weight, so it's not as much on the. Muscle. Yeah, and you sort of just rock. You rock forward from the knee rather than having. Uh, the legs extended where you haven't taken up all the body weight. You're sort of fulcrumed, and, and uh, you can absolutely do uh, this bent knee uh, uh, kneeling form of push-up no matter what age you are, huh? Absolutely, and no matter how strong you are, you should be able to do that. It takes a pretty substantial amount of the weight off when you drop your knees like that. And then what I tell my clients is you, know, you start with where you're at. You you do what you can do, and really the way you get better and the way I get better is no different. It, after 30 years of doing this, it's no different for me if I want to grow muscle or get better or get stronger and in better shape. It's the same thing I have to do in an exercise program that a beginner has to do, and that is push my body beyond those normal comfort zones. So if someone is doing a push-up and they can't do a push-up, then they drop down to that modified push-up to the knee. And in turn, they would just push themselves as much as they could do, try to go as far as they could go, and push themselves a couple more reps beyond that, uh, beyond that pain level when you start hurting and really wanting to stop. You go a couple more, and that tells the body that you have to get better. You have to adjust its activity. And, and it's the same thing that applies to me, Dr. Courtney. I just take the weight, go heavier weight, uh, go more intense. And that's essentially the way I have built my body up over the past 30 years is just by adding every time a little more intensity, a little more struggle to the exercise, and that's how the body adapts and gets better. So how do I pick a number? Now, you, you're talking to an old – by the way, the, the terminology must have changed somewhere in the last 40 or 50 years because uh, uh, one of my previous lives was as a physical educator. That's, that's my initial um, – Graduation is a, a, a gym teacher. Went taught in the high school. Okay, so now there's a specialized division called physical trainer, which what you are. But in the old days, that was just called a physical educator. So let me ask you some physical educator kind of questions that are on my mind. How do I know what number to start with? Do if I was just talking about the push-ups, we'll get into these other four exercises in a minute. But determining the number. Uh, do I go with as many as I can do to get to the number? 
uh, 8. Uh, that used to be the old military press way of doing things. And then increased resistance to 12. How do I modify, come up with a number to start with, and then modify it? And that is a great question because it really depends on what you're looking for. If you're, if you're trying to slim the muscle down, if you're trying to reduce it down, then you would stay in a little higher rep zone if you're trying to build that muscle. And a lot of women will say, you know, I don't really want to build any muscle, so they stay in the high rep zone, and that's where they make their mistake. In a lot of cases, they should be going lower in the rep zone and trying to build muscle because that's what creates curves on females is those muscle bellies. The women should not be afraid of, of building muscle. But to answer your question specifically, if you're looking uh, for an average uh, rep zone to be in, it would be around that 8 to 10. Oh, okay. With that said, whenever you do eight of these and you're hurting, you want to do a couple of three more. So never really, I don't really count necessarily. I have a range that I try to stay in. But certainly you can get too high in the rep zone, meaning 20, 25 reps, 30 reps. That's really useless at that point as far as building the muscle. And then you can get too low in the rep zone as well where you can only do one or two. Uh, the, the real truth lies in the middle, and it's around 8 to 10. But again, you hit that 8 to 10, you should be struggling. You should be pushing the body. And then adjust the weight accordingly. You know, if you can only do 8 or 10 push-ups on the knees like that, stay with that until you can do 15 or 20, and then come up to the toes, do a regular push-up. Yeah. Three or four, whatever it may be. That's right. Now, I, I got a picture. I think they're listening to a picture of the, of the push-up component and uh, how they can modify it if they couldn't even do one and how they could get to the point where they would know that it's time to get those legs extended, get off the knees, and move into ultimately being able to do a regular push-up. So I got that picture in mind. We've got four more to go. Paint me another picture as good as you painted me the picture of the push-up for the next of these five exercises. The next one would be set up, and, and it works the abdominal area. The one area that people always want to slim down, especially men, you know, we have that front porch that hangs there as we age. And, and most people think that you can spot reduce by working the abs and, and spot reduce that belly fat off. Really, that comes to dieting. But certainly working it has its benefits simply because you're going to get stronger in that area. And whenever your lower back hurts, and I always scream at my, my clients that if your lower back is hurting, Train the opposite side. Train the abdominals. Get it stronger where you where your back is. Oh, there's a good rule. When your back hurts, the problem isn't in the back; it's in the abdominals, huh? It's in it's in abdominal strength. In most cases, you need to strengthen those abs to support the back, because that is basically those four muscles that hold everything straight up. So, with abdominals, and there's people who can't do a setup. The worst thing you can do is get on the ground, put your feet under the couch, and sit straight up. The vision of a setup should be where you're laying on the ground, on your, on your back, flat on your back with maybe your, your feet hooked up underneath the couch so you don't raise up whenever you come up. But whenever you, first thing you should do is tuck your chin. That's the first move in a setup is tuck your chin to your chest and then roll up in a ball from there. Start with your head, with tuck your chin, and then continue to roll up in a ball very slowly. Some people are not going to be able to raise themselves off the ground all the way. However, all you would have to do is just roll those shoulders forward, continue to try to roll up in the ball as far as you possibly can, and then ease yourself back down, unroll, and repeat that several times. And, again, try to stay in that 8 to 10 rep zone. Off the front end, some people, Dr. Courtney, I've seen them tuck their chin, be able to barely lift their shoulders off the ground, and then unroll. That's fine. Wherever you must start, that is okay. But that is the best way to work abs. It's the best way to strengthen those four muscles. And again, no equipment needed. All you need is something to hook your feet up underneath like a count something heavy. Or someone hold it to the yank for you. And then tuck that chin, roll up in the ball as far as you can, and then unroll on the way back down. That is the way to work back uh, uh, abs. If you do a normal setup setting straight up, you're going to hurt your lower back because that puts pressure on the lower back. If you don't roll up in the fall, it's going to cause pressure on the lower back, and that's how people hurt their backs uh, working on sit-ups is they sit straight up as opposed to rolling and tucking uh, the chin and rolling up in the fall. So you may not even be able to get up all the way, but the fact that you're just like the modification that you made for the push-up, which was to go to the knees, the modification here is you're rolling up. And 
the uh, stress is being put on the abdominal musculature working out. At some point, as you continue to do that, you will be able to make it all the way up. Fair enough said? Oh, no question. You should be able to, especially if you're pushing the body. Whenever you start to hurt, and I tell people this is really, you know, Muhammad Ali had a great line when they asked him one time about how many push-ups he did or how many setups he did getting ready for a fight one time, and, and I don't even remember the fight, but he, he said that he didn't know because he didn't start start counting until they started hurting. And really, that's where you start counting. When they start to hurt, that's when you start to count. And that's the best way I've ever heard it put because you really want to get around two to three after you really start to hurt and try to push the body beyond those comfort zones. So on the setup, what you want to do is tuck that chin, try to get the shoulders off the ground, and that's as far as you can go each time. Try to get there to that point and go through it. Ease through that point, see what you can do. And every time you do that, every your muscles will get a little stronger through that range, and, and ultimately you will be able to do a full setup, yeah. Now, this may be a little technical, but it's my physical educator voice tapping me on the shoulder again. So let me put this one out there. Shouldn't there be, uh, in order to isolate the iliopsoas out of it, big, big word, I know, shouldn't there be a bent knee? In other words, shouldn't you, if the legs are straight, isn't the work really that's doing that's being done here in the, in the musculature of the pelvis, not the abdominals? Am I right about that? Yes, you are right. You do need to bend the knees. Uh, I meant to include that when I said flat. I meant to your back, obviously, but certainly you should uh, add a slight bend. Ah, see, they taught me right. They taught me right back when. Okay. That knee is really critical. If you don't, if you don't, what will happen is, is you're going to feel more stress in your leg. Sure. That's the reason that you isolate those uh, knees, bring them up. Uh, I bend them generally at about a 30 degree is where I'm at, uh, 30 to 45. And that's about right. Whatever's comfortable, basically, uh, to get you in that position. And then from there, you're in the right starting position, yes. Okay, I'm up with you now. I'm feeling good about it so far. Two down, three to go. So what's the next one? What's the next of the five? The next of the five is where we're going to work lunges, uh, work the leg with, through an exercise called lunges. And lunges uh, is one of the best exercises, not only for the lay person but also for an athlete who's trying to increase their speed. I use lunges for athletes of all types, not only the, the basketball trainers that I train, or the, the players that I train, the baseball players. Every athlete out there needs speed, no matter who you are. Uh, so what I, I do with my guys is I have them do lunges, and basically a lunge is just a very over-accentuated step. What you want to do, stand straight up with your feet together, have a, a place like even a parking lot or a living room that has some space for you that you can walk a distance, say even 15 or 20 feet would serve the purpose. A longer would even be better. But what you would do is stand straight up, your feet together, then you would take a longer than normal walking step and you would bend that knee, go down, touch the knee, the other knee to the floor, and then raise yourself back up. Two things that must be done here. First, you don't want to lean over that, that leg that you that you have in front of you. That, that takes weight off, and then in turn, it's the wrong form. You're going to hurt your back. And then in turn, you want to make sure that you take a long enough step that you're at a 90-degree angle whenever you're at, the, when you're at your bottom position. So in other words, when that opposite knee is on the ground, you want to have that other knee needs to be at a 90 or perpendicular to the ground at a right angle at a 90 degree. That's the proper form. If you take too short of a step, what happens is you'll hyperextend that knee. That knee will go over your foot, and that is where you start having knee problems. So everyone that's doing lunges, they need to make sure that they take a fairly long step. In fact, I, I call it a longer than normal walking step. Okay. And if you if you think that when you do it, you'll understand it. Now with that, you come straight up, and then you go with the next leg, and you keep walking. So let's call it walking lunges. So basically, you're taking a step, bending at the knee, going all the way down, touching the other knee to the ground, coming back up, and then in turn going right back. Right to the back. Knee. So you're walking down this path, doing these lunges. And I tell you, Dr. Courtney, it is the most effective exercise that I've ever seen for legs. It's much like a one-legged squat. It helps with coordination. It certainly helps with speed because if you look at the running motion, that is essentially what you're doing is over-accentuating that running stride 
and it gets you a lot stronger through that stride and lengthens the stride. And all of the athletes that I've ever have done the, uh, to do this exercise, they have all gotten a lot faster. Your speed schools all use this exercise, uh, exercise of the lunges, and they do others, but certainly lunges are the uh, featured exercise for speed school. So it shows you how effective these things are. And for shaping the legs, nothing better. If women want those nice sweeps on the legs on the outside, the only exercise to do is lunges. Also helps tone the, the back end. It really helps with the glutes and, and lifting them. You will feel it the next day really heavy in the glutes. You'll be sore in the glutes. And that, what that's doing is raising that muscle up, that glute muscle up. And that's what we want. We don't want width on the on the derriere. We want height on the derriere. That's what, and that's what this exercise does. Is it raises the back end and makes it a better look. All right, there you have it. The chest was started with the abdominals. We went through the legs. We got two more to go. Why don't we take a short break? Is that okay with you, Todd? That is great. I'll hang on you, Beth. Okay, we're gonna take a short break, folks. We got two more to go. I got a picture in my mind of what these are. Do you got a picture in your mind? I hope we do. I think he's painting it very, very well for you. We're going to be back in a minute with Mr. Arkansas three or four times. I can't keep track of it all. Next time it's coming up in August. Uh, well, we got two more exercises to go to get those winter poundage, uh, get that winter poundage off, moving into spring and summer, and how to do it without buying a machine. We'll be back in a moment with Mr. Todd Scarborough. lately was the doing good. top of your complaint list even if your doctor asks you what you need the recommended product oh, of the fruits and vegetables a day is a great to learn about a five years in the formulation that delivered five servings of fruits and minerals in just one ounce that's right it's through the spirit the blessings of fruit of the spirit are now formulated into a delicious whole fruit parade product rich in antioxidants and minerals your health is more than just a test result. It's a balance of physical, spiritual, and emotional factors. You work regularly to strengthen your faith. Let Food the Spirit help cover your nutritional needs in a convenient and cost-effective ounce a day. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Fruit the Spirit, a blessing for your good health. Fruit of the Spirit, five servings of fruits and minerals with no added sugar. That's 1-800-442-3793. 442-3793 for your good health. Call them now, 1-800-442-3793. This is Dennis Shea Courtney, MD. Have you become confused about how best to manage your health? It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow that seems to be reasonable enough, but no matter how dutifully you follow the instruction, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting edge allergy correction, and a host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to AM Impact on Your House here on this Wednesday version of the show. We're here today talking about how to get the winter poundage off and how to do it in the most effective way and how to do it without buying a machine to get it accomplished. Mr. Todd Scarborough says, hey, you don't need that machine. You already are a machine, and if you work this thing right, you'll be able to accomplish your goal and objective without losing fat, not losing body weight. That was an important concept he brought to us initially. Of course, he ought to know. He's been Mr. Arkansas a number of times over. Of course, inquiring minds, and we found out in other shows. Two questions I'll just take right off the table immediately. He does know Bill. And he absolutely does not know Jennifer at all. Fair enough, Todd? <laughs> I would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember asking you before. I, and I, believe me, no more. We won't have to go any further with it. Um, we got 
We got three exercises of the five down. We got two more to go. Keep it going. You're painting some great pictures with the words. What other two body parts are we working on now? Well, it's what we would do now is finish up with the legs. The calves are extremely important to have strong, to be able to have balance. Look at what really takes a lot of the older people out, say 75 and 80 on. Most of the time, people are doing very well. They fall and break a hip, and then from there, they go downhill very quickly. And the reason why is one muscle tone and two bone strength. And muscle tone, the lack of, causes them to have instability and fall, and the lack of the strength in the hips and the, and the uh, leg bones causes it to break. So what I, the resistance exercises are the only way to go here in strengthening both of these things, not only bone, but also the muscles. And the calf raise is what they do. It's very simple. All you're doing is standing on the ground. You're holding on to something, say, the side of a doorway, uh, 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 your bar, uh, uh, whatever it may be, and then hold on to that and raise yourself up as far as you can on your toes. And I'm not saying on your toes, but the balls of your feet. Okay. And hold and flex and back down. And that is a rep. And you continue to go back and forth and keep that repetition going. Now, a better way to do this, if you have a flight of stairs or even some steps outside coming into your house, you can hang off of one of those steps, hold on to the rail, and that way your heels go down further. Instead of just at ground level, they can stretch and go down further. That is more of an ideal of a, of a calf raise because you get deeper and involve more muscle. But starting off, if you don't have that step, and even if you're starting off kind of as an amateur, you probably should, should start on a flat ground. And then from there, as you get better, progress to a step and then go very deep and then back up. Now, bodybuilders, what we do, we do the very same exercises but we have someone set on our back, um, right, what we call donkey raises, where someone's actually sitting on your back to add weight to the calves. So there's ways to continue to add weight to it, but this is an exercise that completes the leg workout. You've done the legs with the lunges, the upper leg, uh, from the waist to the knees, and now this exercise takes care from the knees down. And women, when they're walking in high heels, that's the reason we invented uh, high heels in this country is to make women's calves and, and, and the back end look good. So that's essentially what we're doing here is raising that calf up. When we work it, tone it, it makes it look good not only aesthetically but also gives you the balance and strength that it takes to keep yourself upright and then maybe avoid a spill long term if you have that strength in your calves. You can adjust to some type of irregular motion to be able to catch yourself before you fall and break them. Go to it hurts in terms of the number. How many of these do you do? Same thing here. You would want to try to go at the, anywhere from that 10 to 12 rep zone here, probably a little higher in the rep zone, simply because you'll be a little stronger in these. But now, again, you keep going. It doesn't matter how many you do on these. Just continue to go until you hurt. Try to push the, your body beyond those comfort zones. Again, off the front end, you might not be able to do too many. Over time, you'll get stronger and you'll be able to do a lot. Then you can go to the stairs and then ultimately find someone to, to ride you on the back like that with funky raises to add more weight. And that will really tone the calves whenever you start adding weight to it. I can see the progression. Great picture that you painted with the words. I'm excited with one more exercise to go. Pray tell, what will it be? And it will be much like a tug of war, basically. It's for the last, and that's the one area we have yet to really do here. In the, the back. Exercises. And the fifth one is going to work the last. The back is extremely important to keep strong. That's one of your biggest muscles, in fact, the biggest muscle in the upper body, and it's responsible for lifting a lot of weight. In fact, when you lift anything off the ground, you should use your leg first, your lap, your back second, and then in turn all the other muscles as a supportive player. You always want to use those bigger muscles. The biggest mistake people make in hurting their lower back is they go down and they, they pick it straight, have their legs straight, and they reach over and pick it straight up with their lower back, and that's the worst thing they could ever do is bend there at the waist and pick something up. What you should do is bend at the knees and pick it up. Uh, but, but with your back, what, what for the best exercise that you can do without any type of equipment, and this one does take a partner. You, what you do is you have two people uh, with a tug-of-war type setting, get a towel, 
of any type of long beach towel, any type of towel would work or something along that line, a short piece of rope. Then in turn, you're going to stand there at arm's distance. You both have uh, basically one guy has their arms all the way out. The other guy has their arms all the way in in a pulling motion. And then one person resists while the other person pulls. So you go back and forth in a tug-of-war setting like there. You don't lose your feet. You're just moving your arms. Mm -hmm. and this is work in your lap. So one person is pulling and the other person is resisting, and then that person pulls back and the other person resists. So it's a great way to work the lat and keep the lat strong, and it really does create kind of almost a humorous type of exercise when you're working out with someone else because one person may be a little stronger than the other, and when you're letting that, that out on that, when that person's pulling and you're resisting, you slowly let them pull out, and then, they, then you can continue to take turns doing that and that will help strengthen the lap. And it's a lot of fun to do. You, a lot of the times whenever me and another guy are doing, we wind up in a competition to some degree, and then we start getting tickled. And, and so it is funny over time of how it progresses, but it certainly is a very good exercise. And one that really, the only one that I know of, Doc, that's going to work the lap uh, is it, it, without a piece of equipment. There are also these rubber bands that you can get, these training or resistance bands. I really like those. That's something this exercise can be done with that as well by yourself, just hooking those bands onto uh, something heavy and then doing the same type of motion, which is what we call a low row in the uh, in bodybuilding, which is basically just taking your arm, stretching it out, and then pulling it all the way back to your chest using your lat muscle. Outstanding. I got the pictures in my mind because you painted them so well. I can easily see them in my mind. I can I could do them. I hope our listeners can do the same. In fact, I'm pretty sure they can. Um, exercising to get the, the, the five just easy ones, no machines necessary, to lose that winter poundage and move into summers and spring. That is a wonderful little easily performed routine. All in all, how, how long will it take for someone to do a cycle of five uh, in terms of an average what is it? We're talking about 15 minutes. Are we talking? How many minutes is it going to take to do these five all together? I would say, I would say generally, let's say you're doing a set or two of each. Uh, it would take anywhere from 15 or 20 minutes off the front end, and then over time you can continue just to add sets. So in other words, like push-ups, you go until you can't go, and then you, you do a couple of three more, and you stop and rest, catch your breath. If you're winded, do another, and then maybe do another. So do three on each one. Work your way up to where when you start off, you're doing one on each one, and then you're working two on each one. Finally, you want to get to a point to where you're doing three or four or five. And then, and then if you're doing four or five steps on each one of these exercises, you're looking at about anywhere from 35 to 45 minutes. Of course, the workout is very effective. You're going to feel your entire body being pumped. You're going to get the mus the muscle work as well, not only the strength training and, and help, help strengthen the bones and the muscles, but you're also going to do a cardio workout in the meantime because you want to stay back to back with these things. You want to do a set, get your breath, go again. Very little lag time in between. In fact, people ask me, how long do you rest? I say, rest just long enough to catch your breath and go again. So you're getting a cardio workout, a muscle strength workout, a bone density workout. You're getting a, a, a wide range of activities here, or at least benefits here, from one uh, simple program of five different exercises. Question. Um, a lot of, uh, at least my perspective, a lot of credence needs to be given as we age with the, lo the loss and lack of flexibility. If I ever noticed that uh, there was a component that put at risk, that put us at risk as we age, it is losing our flexibility. In fact, we, we operate in at a smaller and a smaller range of motion to the point uh, that as we're really aged, we're operating at about two or three percent. We have no flexibility whatsoever. What uh, should flexibility issue uh, become a part of one's daily regime? We didn't really mention it here, except I can see in doing things like lunges. Yeah, there is going to be some flexibility uh, added to it. How do you feel about this whole concept of flexibility? Is it just however it comes along with the exercise you're doing, or do you need to devote some specific time to just it? Well, 
I certainly think that by doing these exercises, you're going to get some, some flexibility from it, especially if you do it the way it's supposed to be done in a full range. In other words, from top dead center to bottom dead center. So you want to go uh, the full range of motion. When you do that, you're getting some flexibility from that, certainly. But now with that said, I'm a big fan of yoga. I'm a big fan of Pilates. I believe that stretching plays a huge role as we age. No, there's no doubt that we should work on flexibility, pliability. That comes with hydration as well. If we've got to hydrate the body even more effectively as we age, certainly stretching would benefit the body. And yoga, simple yoga class, or just these basic stretches, just stretching your legs. There's many different exercises and programs out there that, that are people have people a lot more savvy about the stretching games than me. I stretch about two to three minutes just to warm up. I take lighter weight to warm up with, and then from there go right into my activity. So don't really spend a whole lot of time stretching except for during the exercise. And I really stretch a lot there because I'm going all the way down and all the way up with every move. Okay. Got the picture. Thanks for addressing that issue of uh, flexibility. Now, another component that you come along when winter months pass by, we our diets may have been askew. Maybe they were right on. I don't know. But I guess another component you really got to talk about is what your diet's got to consist of as you're moving toward the healthy and trying to get slim and fit. Uh, I'm imagining you've got some recommendations for us to pursue with respect to diet that uh, we really should listen to. What do you got in the way of recommendations there? Well, I, I've, I've done it for so long here, for 30 years, not only in bodybuilding, but have taught people uh, the diet game. And, and really what I've done over time, Dr. Courtney, is simplify this down. It, it's too crazy. There's a lot of books out there that are written by some very high-minded people, but it's really something that we can't apply to our lives. It's hard to apply. Uh, it's great science, and it's, it's, it's very sound in the science, but how does it apply to our life? And here's what I always have my clients do, and I've simplified it down to this. If you are trying to lose weight and be healthy, you have and must eat good quality fuel, period. You cannot continue to eat the junk. I, I tell everybody that comes train with me is that you must do the diet or I will not train you because if you don't eat right, there's nothing that I can do in the gym for you. So but with that said, higher quality fuels, about four meals a day. The biggest mistake Americans make is we go most of the day without fuel, and then we eat a massive supper at night. We take in the bulk of our calories at night at our, at our dinner meal. Worst mistake you could ever make if you're trying to lose weight. But what I always try to, to tell my clients to do, make that big, make that big supper meal. Make a good, high-quality, plate lunch type meal. A meat dish, a protein dish, uh, some fibrous carbohydrates like cabbage or broccoli or celery or onions or salad, greens, and then in turn, some... Uh, complex carbs like grains or uh, sweet potatoes, something like that. Then in turn, take small portions of it and divide it up. I divide that supper meal that I cook up into about four portions, equal portions. And then from there, I use that the next day to eat on. So every night I prepare my food. Going into the next day, I have it in portion containers. And I have about a palm-sized portion of meat, about a palm-sized portion of rice or beans or complex carbs. And then as much of the fibrous vegetables that I want, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, uh, salad, greens, those types of things, as much of that as you want. So I have a big salad, a small a piece of meat, a small serving of, of grain uh, around four times a day. If you do that, you don't have to count calories, you don't have to be a rocket scientist, you don't have to read a big long book. You do that every day for a year's time, and I guarantee you, you will normalize your body weight, even if you're 100 pounds overweight right now. In a year's time, if you do that program, that simple program, you will lose weight in a year's time and normalize yourself in a year's time, literally. Wow. That does sound pretty simple. And if you just think about what you said, it makes a lot of sense. A lot of fiber in there. Um, a lot of the so-called good carbs, the low glycemic index carbs, with just a few grains. And, uh, and and a portion of protein. Obviously, you need to help build muscle. So you got all the ingredients there. What about supplementation? Are you a big proponent of that? I'm guessing you are. Yes, I am. I think there's a lot of stuff out there on the market that's basically useless, however, and there's people that are taking some things that are really they shouldn't take because they're just wasting money. But with that said, there's some supplements out there that are absolutely mandatory, in my opinion, uh, one of which is an essential fatty acid or omega-3 fat. 
I'm a big proponent of fish oil or omega-3. I'm a cod liver oil guy. I think that's the best source of omega-3 fat. Uh, cod liver oil, this is a tablespoon a day. It has about three and a half grams of omega-3. And if someone is to take, and the average person was to take a tablespoon of cod liver oil a day, just the average American, the benefits that they would get is enormous as far as what it does for the body. Essential fats help with the skin, nourish the brain, help the heart. Uh, one of the best anti-inflammatories that we know of. Uh, it really is now we found that there's a fat component, a fat loss component in it as well. It's a really a magical elixir. And if you really want to know what the snake oil is of the 21st century and really the, the best product out there as far as a uh, kind of a cure-all thing and what we're missing in our diet, it's omega-3. So certainly push that a lot. And all of my clients, I recommend them taking a tablespoon of cod roll every night with their dinner meal. What a great discussion this has been today. We're, we're coming right up to that crescendo moment, the uh, the time when you'll be able to start that vehicle up and get on your way. Um, as we reach that time, why don't you bring this to a conclusion the way you want to end it, uh, and then we'll say farewell to you today, Mr. Todd Scarborough. How should we pull this to an end today? And, and basically there. No matter what you want to do as far as physically, find an activity that you like to do. If you don't like doing it, you're not going to stay with it. So find a physical activity that you like to do. Do it often and, and do it consistently four times a week. Push the body beyond those comfort zones. Try to go a little bit. If you're walking, try to walk a faster pace, walk a hill, whatever. And then regulate your diet where you're cutting out the junk, going back to real good foods, which will satisfy you and nourish you. Eat balanced meals, smaller meals, more frequent meals, and that alone is the only thing you have to do to normalize your life, be more healthy, lose weight, have more energy, and it's a very simple process, and you don't have to invest in a lot of programs, and you don't have to read all these crazy books. It's just that simple, Doc. I'm telling you, I've seen people lose 100 pounds. I've had 10 clients lose 100 pounds over the past two oh, years. Oh, boy. It can be done just that simple with that program. All right, Mr. Scarborough, Mr. Arkansas, five times over. Good luck to you this summer when you compete again. We'll talk to you, I'm sure, again in the fall, see how that all went. Until then, this is Dr. Dennis Courtney with Mr. Todd Scarborough saying so long for AM Impact on Your Health. Right. Road in Road, 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 in